Back in May, OnePlus introduced the 7 Pro, introducing a whole new look for the brand. Then, a few months later, OnePlus announced the refreshed 7T and 7T Pro models, and given the timing of the launches, the 7 and 7 Pro are still relevant today. So why did OnePlus announce a phone so identical to the 7T Pro? Let's find out. I'm Ricky with GSM Arena, and this is our review of the OnePlus 7T. The 7T has a refined glass and metal design. I like the contrast of the polished metal frame against the matte glass. Not to mention, this matte finish feels really nice in my hand, and I feel like I have a better grip with it. I just, I, I really enjoy soft things, okay? This is the Glacier Blue OnePlus 7T, and it's got brighter shades of blue compared to the finish of the 7 Pro's Nebula Blue, though I do prefer the more mysterious one. The 7T doesn't have a pop-up camera. Instead, the selfie camera is housed in a notch, which I got used to right away. The screen isn't curved, and I think I prefer this over the 7T Pro's curved display, but it really depends on what your preference is. I will say the curved screen does make it easier to do the back gesture, but I don't like how a phone with a curved display can sometimes distort the edges of a video or a website that you're looking at. Anyway, going back to the design, there's a bunch of talk about this round camera ring, and a lot of you guys don't seem to like it. But is it really any different than a square one? Okay, so I kind of get why some people are turned off by it, but it really is just an aesthetic. After all, there has to be a way for OnePlus to differentiate the refreshed models from the other models. We just wonder if OnePlus will go with the same circular design next year, or go with, I don't know, a triangle or something. When using it on a table, the ring does raise the 7T up quite a bit, so if you'd rather protect the camera ring from surfaces, you can try one of OnePlus's cases. I really like the red silicone case, and the sandstone black is a classic OnePlus material. Otherwise, the included clear case is not bad and protects the corners pretty well. This is one of the best displays that OnePlus has ever used on a device. And on paper, it's the brightest and most color accurate we've ever tested from OnePlus. I like how OnePlus makes it easy to understand which color profile you should choose when first setting up the 7T. You can choose something accurate, semi-vibrant, or if you're into something more obnoxiously saturated, hey, we won't judge. The display is a 6.55 inch fluid AMOLED screen with a slightly longer 20 by 9 aspect ratio and full HD resolution. Viewing the screen in direct sunlight is never an issue, and I didn't notice any problems with polarized sunglasses either. Moving forward, OnePlus is using the 90Hz fluid AMOLED screen for all its phones, and I appreciate that. Even though the phone is cheaper than most flagships, the display is somewhere that OnePlus decided to spend a little more on, and it helps the phone stand out. So for those asking, is the 90Hz display really necessary? Absolutely not but it does elevate the user experience. Not to mention, it's a better experience if you play games, as long as those games support the higher frame rates. And not gonna lie, Pokemon Go is pretty awesome in 90 FPS. The OnePlus 7T comes with Android 10 out of the box, laid over with a customized Oxygen OS. The Android 10 update brings more ways to customize the UI. You can change the accent color, you can change the shape of the icons, either the launcher or the quick toggles, and you can apply system-wide dark mode, which also comes on with supported apps. There's also the customizable shelf, which lets you configure shortcuts and add widgets, and I like the parking feature that remembers where you parked and for how long. The in-display fingerprint scanner is among the quickest I've tested these days. It's accurate and reliable, and you barely even see the animation when unlocking the phone. You can choose between the standard nav bar or Android 10's gesture controls. The new Android 10 gestures are more intuitive, there's smoother action, and you can switch apps in one move. To gesture back, you swipe in from either edge of the screen, but the OnePlus gestures weren't like that before. You had to swipe up from the bottom, and I kind of didn't like that. It's worth noting that both the 7T and 7T Pro no longer use the old OnePlus gestures, but I'm also glad that Google's two-button navbar is long gone. That was terrible. Just it was, it was just a mess. Oxygen OS is so smooth and so fast, and the fluid AMOLED display really amplifies that feeling. I have to say, I'm really happy with the software on this guy. 
Powering the 7T is a 3800 milliamp hour battery. It uses the same Warp Charge 30 adapter from before, but the 7T now supports Warp Charge 30T. An update was made to the battery's hardware to accept the adapter's max output for longer. In our endurance tests, we saw a 90 hour endurance score. We tested the phone with the 90 hertz feature turned off, and while it did help the score by a few hours, it wasn't a drastic difference. Besides, if you turned it off, you're depriving yourself of the intended user experience. There is just one downside to warp charge, and it's that it requires a factory cable and charger in order for it to work. We tested the OnePlus 7T with a USB powered delivery charger as well, and it got 42% in 30 minutes, which is not bad. But with the Warp Charge 30T charger, we got to 72% in the same amount of time. Thankfully, there is a OnePlus car charger available, but it's a little steep at 50 bucks. It can be really convenient though. On my 12 minute drive to the gym, while also navigating with Google Maps, the 7T recharged from 18 to 38%. Not bad, and I made it through my workout. The camera is where OnePlus made some changes by adding a third sensor that wasn't present on the OnePlus 7. The setup is made up of a 48 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel telephoto with two times optical zoom, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus and a macro mode, which we'll get to later. Picture quality is mostly identical to the 7 and 7T Pro since they all use the same 48 megapixel sensor. Images generally look great with above average dynamic range. Details aren't the best, but you'll only really notice this upon very close inspection. With the telephoto camera, we noticed a minor issue when zooming in up close. It seems that OnePlus is slightly upsampling these images as it has done in the past, and this isn't a problem. It just means that details aren't as sharp as they could be. Aside from that, the telephoto camera takes pretty nice shots with great dynamic range and vibrant colors, though they don't always match the main cameras. The ultra-wide camera captures nice colors and dynamic range, and while this isn't the best ultra-wide on the market, it does take very nice photos. There is a somewhat strong distortion that can sometimes cause chromatic aberrations, and that happens towards the edges of the frame, and this means you can kind of see the primary color separating, Again, this is only really visible at the edges of the frame. The 7T can take nightscape photos, and the image stacking works pretty well to combine exposures. The downside is that many details are lost in the process. Now you can also take nightscape photos with the ultra-wide angle camera, and this comes in handy since the ultra-wide's lens isn't as bright as the main camera's f1.6 aperture. There's a 16 megapixel selfie camera on the 7T, and it's identical to the 7 Pro's pop-up camera. Selfies are generally a bit softer than other flagships, but the details are still good enough. Skin tones are mostly accurate, and HDR helps keep the backgrounds well exposed. You can also take portraits with the front camera, and subject separation isn't bad. On the 7T, there's a new macro shooting mode, and it lets the ultra wide angle camera get really up close on smaller objects and surfaces. There are three zoom levels in macro mode, but they're all cropped from the same sensor. Portrait shots use the telephoto camera, and subject separation is quite good. You can also shoot portraits using the main 48 megapixel camera, so you don't have to step back as far from your subject. With Oxygen OS 10, there are a few new video modes available, but only two of them we were able to use at the time of this review. There's 4K video recording with the ultra-wide camera, and there's a new super stable video mode. 960 FPS slow-mo is also coming in a future update. There are some times when you'll want to shoot video with the ultra-wide camera, but keep in mind that the dimmer lens will potentially result in noisy video indoors. Sadly, that noise is actually present in super stable video, even in bright light. The lens on the ultra wide isn't amazing to begin with, and there's no optical image stabilization, so we'd recommend you throw the phone onto a DJI Osmo if you want to shoot cinematic footage. The 7T fills a gap left between the 7 and the 7 Pro with faster charging, the addition of a third camera, and the 90Hz Fluid AMOLED display. It also fills gaps in markets like the US, where the OnePlus 7 didn't launch, and we imagine that it would do the vice versa with the 7T Pro in markets where the 7 Pro didn't launch. So the question is, should you buy the OnePlus 7T? 
If you don't care for the 7T Pro's larger, higher res display with dual curves, the 7T Pro is a more compact design and you still get the 90 hz display. Starting at 599, the OnePlus 7T can do everything that a flagship can do, albeit without a polished camera experience, but it's up to you to decide whether wireless charging and an official water resistant IP rating are really worth hundreds more. So that's it, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below and tell me your thoughts on the OnePlus 7T and let me know what you think of this round camera design. With that, I'm Ricky signing off for GSM Arena and I'll see you guys next time.